Travis, thanks for joining Wada Talks. The name Travis Tiger to many people will be ever associated with the person who helped bring down Lance Armstrong. Tell us a bit about the experience of the Armstrong case. Yeah, Ben, you know, I, I know why people uh, frame um, the questions that way and why the media has written that. Obviously, that's how not, you know, we don't look at it that way. Um, Lance Armstrong and the others during the cycling um, time at, at that period when his doping was revealed and all the others that were involved with it, their, their decisions to cheat sport intentionally with performance enhancing drugs, that's what brought them down. It wasn't anything that you know, we did. We simply honored the oath that we had to clean athletes to ensure that the rules were fairly enforced. And, and that's, that's basically what we did. I mean, we unfortunately uncovered, um, you know, thanks in part to the bravery of some witnesses who were willing to come forward, a, a deep and systemic doping problem in the sport of uh, professional cycling, you know, going back to the mid 90s. And, and it was really incumbent upon us if we're going to maintain our integrity and our oath to clean athletes to handle the evidence as, uh, as appropriate as we should have and, and move forward as aggressively as, as we could to ensure that, you know, those athletes who did intentionally cheat the sporting world were, were ultimately held accountable. And, and, and more importantly from our strategy was to make sure those in the system, so the team doctors, the team trainers, the directors, of the teams who were involved with the doping, you know, to to a certain extent, the athletes themselves, you know, almost had no choice. Like they, they did have a choice. Let's be crystal clear. They could have walked, and there were there were a lot of athletes that did walk from the sport. There were some that stayed in the sport and tried to compete. Um, you know, they weren't able to be successful competing because the you know game changing nature that these drugs provide athletes who use them and that are otherwise you know very good athletes. So so there was a choice. But we wanted to make sure that those in the system, the doctors, the team directors, the coaches, who allowed this system to you know, perpetuate as long as it did, that they were removed from the sport. And, and really that was our target going into this investigation. And as a competitive athlete and a sports fan from a young age looking at your childhood, at what age did you know about the extent of doping in sport? You know, I, I guess when I came back to, to coach at the high school level, I mean, I saw, um, you know, we had a successful program, a couple of pro players, a number one draft pick um, for Major League Baseball in 1990, came out of the high school, um, slam dunk champ uh, in the NBA, came out of our high school. And, and what I saw when I was coaching is, you know, parents who were pushing their kids really, really hard. Um, so at least from my perspective, uh, you know, it was this competitive environment that left unchecked you know, parents, coaches, uh, you know, sport organizations will put tremendous pressure on young athletes to, to justify doing the wrong thing. And if they're otherwise competitive and you put a lot of money and a lot of fame at success and they are convinced that others in their sport are cheating to win, then naturally good people are going to make the wrong decision to use these performance enhancing drugs. So, so I think it was at that moment where I really saw um, the, the, the bigger ethical issue, which is our, our desire to win no matter what. And what was your reaction at the time? Was it shock or were you, was it unsurprising? I mean, what, you what know, was I, 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 it was, it was, it was disappointment for sure. Um, you know, the innocence of sport, you know, as a, as a spectator up to that point and a participant up to that point certainly was lost at some level. Um, but I think it renewed sense of urgency and commitment to do everything possible to bring back um, what winning truly is, which is not you know, a, a victory, a podium position, or a medal, or a yellow jersey by fraud, right? It's, it's doing it the right way and having you know, great pride and satisfaction in knowing that you were the best athlete that day and you did it the right way by the rules um, that's the only sort of satisfaction I think we should, we should um, that, that athletes should gain when they compete and win. You've been involved in anti-doping for a number of years now. How much has what is now an industry changed in that time? You know, I, I think a, a whole lot has changed. I mean, most importantly, uh, I think uh, clean athletes today have hope that there's an independent organization, both at the world level and WADA, as well as in you know most developed countries and their NATO that's independent of sport and is here that is going to protect their right and do everything in their power and their authority to uphold you know their ability to compete and not just compete but compete and win without having to use performance enhancing drugs you know we've obviously seen the advancement of the WADA code new version just coming into effect today 
um, new laboratory standards, new testing mechanisms like the ABP. So there's a whole lot of, you know, in the weeds kind of functions that have gone to support the idea that athletes today have a better chance than they've ever had, I truly believe, um, to compete and win. Looking to the major leagues now in the United States, they of course run under a different type of anti-doping program to sports in the rest of the world. What would be your main message to them? Yeah, you know, I think the independent model is obviously the, the key to, from what we've seen, and you saw it in the Mitchell report, you've seen other researchers um, talk about this independence, the separation of the policing and the promoting, you know, sport promoters in our professional sports, maybe more than any other sport, you know, are driven for revenues. You know, we've got an NFL that has, I think, put a target of $25 billion as its revenue target over the next, you know, several years. Um, but bottom line is there's an inherent, you know, tension between putting fans in the seats, bigger TV contracts, bigger sponsorship money, and, and having to, unfortunately, discipline players who violate the rules. There is a tension there. So, so what we've seen um, work in, in our world in the Olympics is independent organizations. So I would, I would encourage them to take a real hard look at outsourcing and, and making independent their programs and, and get it off their hands so they can go to the business that they're the best at, which is promoting themselves. And yeah, great, giving us great athletic accomplishments and, and let an independent organization who, whose sole job it is to you know, police the sport and to ensure that athletes' rights are upheld, um, health, safety, the integrity of the sport, and not worried about the promotion aspects of it. The UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, we saw earlier this year, it's made real strides in improving its anti-doping program. I've seen it called the code in all but name. How impressed are you with what they've done? Yeah, look, I, I think it's a great example of a sport that you know, recognized that it needed to do, get on the front end of providing its athletes the opportunity to compete without having to use these dangerous performance enhancing drugs and being considered, you know, it's a combat sport. So they're, you know, the health and safety aspects are, you know, they're not unique, but they're at issue um, in a combat sport. So they, they took, uh, I think, a really, very courageous decision, not unlike the United States Olympic Committee and said, we're gonna hand this off and all material aspects um, of this program, we're not gonna be involved with. We're gonna let you USADA as Anato run our global program totally independent of us. So we do the test distribution plan. So who's tested? We decide what special analysis, so when EPO, CIR, blood, human growth hormone, ABP is going to be utilized. We decide through the WADA standard on TUEs, when TUEs through an independent committee even of us are gonna be granted. We decide when a case moves forward. We have the intelligence gathering function to bring the non-analytical cases. And then there's independent judges that oversee our you know, decision making and ultimately put in the rules, uh, the sanction um, applicable to the facts of the case. But, but I think it's a new standard for professional sport and, and I, I think they should be really complimented and I know the athletes have, have welcomed the opportunity. 2015 has been a year when doping has very much been in the, in the spotlight in the, in the media. Do you think we're at something of a crossroads for anti-doping in sport? I, I think so. I mean, I think, I think we've seen the effectiveness of independent organizations and we've seen what happens when, you know, countries or federations don't pay full attention to the importance of the rights of clean athletes. And, and that it's, you know, our job as independent organizations, both at WADA and the national levels like us at USADA, um, to ensure that clean athletes' rights and their voice is being heard and that whether it's countries or sports federations are not allowed to get away with you know, systemic doping um, within their um, jurisdictions and that we have to hold them accountable. And let's put in you know, changes to ensure that there's no chance that that can happen, happen again. And, and I you know, hope that's what happens going forward in, in these situations. A few years ago, you were named in Sports Illustrated magazine as one of their top 50 most influential people in sport, and then in Time magazine as one of the top 100 most influential people in the world. What's next for Travis Tiger? You know, those awards are very fashionable, and they're meaningless, obviously, today. Um, you know, I, I, I love serving clean athletes, and as long as we're making a difference and they have trust in me to do the job to fight for their rights to compete on a level playing field. I, I, I want to do that for as long as they're willing to have me and we're making a difference. Travis Tiger, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.